Hello, it's Keith here and this is the second of the Hello World series of my ARM assembly programming tutorials. Today we're going to be learning how to get a Hello World message working on the Game Boy Advance. You can see it over there, and down here and up here. Um, very basic, just Hello World message, but we'll later be extending that and we'll be making a more advanced version which also runs um, some debugging tools, a monitor showing the registers and a mem dump showing a little bit of the memory there. So these will be good if you're getting started programming these systems. Now the problem with the Game Boy Advance is we're going to have to write our own font routine, we're going to have to define our own font, and we're going to have to use that to draw pixels to the screen. We're going to be using a bitmap screen today, not a tile map, because that's the easier way to get started if you're a beginner, I think. You know, you've got total control of the screen memory, at least that's what I think, so that's what we're going to be looking at doing. Now, I do have to point something out though first, because apparently some people don't know. All of the examples on my website are available for download. If you see at the corner, you've got this files available, click to download here in this um, sources disk image. If you click that, you should get a zip file containing all of the sources for the um, ARM assembly programming tutorials. Everything should be in there. I say that because I quite frequently get complaints that I use screenshots images for my screenshots rather than copy pasteable source code you shouldn't need to copy paste anything you should just be able to get the entire source archive and if you can't find the file you're looking for in there let me know because I might have forgotten but they should all be in there uh, just need to point that out because as I say I do occasionally get complaints about that anyway today we're going to be learning how to make the hello world example we're going to learn how to compile it we're going to use our assembler we're going to look at the command line that we use to do that and we're going to look at how to start it in our emulator but actually that's very easy for today's example okay let's get over to the source code and let's take a look okay so here's the first example we're going to be looking at this is our Game Boy Advance Hello World message. And the first thing we're going to have a look at is the font. We've got this nice big uh, font here. This is the same font I use for all of my examples. I typically use a one bit per pixel font. That's um, So one byte will be eight pixels, one line, and it's an eight by eight font. So eight bytes will be one character. And so you can see we've got eight bytes on a line here. So this is going to be the first character here. You can see this is a space, all of the bits are zero. And then these are carrying on down. Now, these start from character 32 of the ASCII character set. So there's no characters below 32 because they're control codes. We don't need to show them. So uh, rather than waste memory and um, data with that, we're just going to skip those. So we're starting from character 32. And this will give us a standard upper lowercase, lowercase, and general characters for our use. Now, that's the font we're going to be using. Let's go to the header and let's have a look what we've got here. Now, we're going to be doing all of the drawing ourselves. We're not using any kind of firmware to do the work for us. So we're going to have to really um, take control of things. And the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remember where we drew the last character. When we draw a character to the screen, we're going to want the next character to be one character across from that. So we've got a cursor X and Y position defined as bytes in memory. And the memory on the um, Game Boy Advance is at this memory address here. This is 2 million, so in hexadecimal. So we've got this memory area that we're using and we're defining two bytes in that area to use for our X and Y position. Now our actual cartridge starts at 8 million, that's going to be the start, and we've got a branch straight over to the program start here. And then we've got a header here. Now quite interestingly, Visual Boy Advance doesn't actually check the header. You can pretty much put all zeros in here. But um, I, I believe this is correct. Uh, this is as good as I can make it at least. We've got the um, the Nintendo logo here, which I'm sure it will get us in lots of trouble because I think that's a copy protection mechanism because of... Um, legal protections on word marks and stuff like that, but um, we do have to put it in to create a, a official standard um, cartridge header. And then we've got um, some other bits here, just defining the uh, manufacturer name, the game title, stuff like that. Our actual program though starts down here, and the first thing we're doing is we're setting a stack pointer. This thing is literally going to run when the, car, the car console starts up. So we're going to have to set everything up ourselves. And the first thing we're doing is we're setting up the stack point and we're pointing it to the very end of that RAM area. So we're using the sort of um, minimum values for our data, our um, cursor position, and the top is the stack. So of course, they're not going to collide unless we use a lot of data one way or the other. What we're doing next is we're turning on the screen. We're using this um, port here, um, 4 million here, and we're going to send the value hexadecimal 403 to that port, and that will turn on layer 2 in screen mode 3, and that is a bitmap screen. And this allows us to write bytes to a memory address, and these will immediately appear as pixels on the screen. So for me, that's the easiest way to get started on a system, so that's what we're doing. 
Okay, we're then loading the memory address of the hello world string. We've got our hello world string just here. This is the string here. It's 255 terminated, which is what I always use in my tutorials. We have the address here at this at this point here. Now, the VASM syntax I'm using for some reason uses longs for 32-bit and um, word for 16-bit. That's not quite normal for um, the ARM. I quite like it personally because I'm used to 8-bit, but I know that's not normally correct for, um, for ARM, but uh, just bear with me on that. That's what we are using today. So we've defined the address here, and then we're loading that address in with this LDR command into R1. Now, um, I don't think I maybe need to do this in this case because the actual address of the data is fairly close. There's this whole thing of there's limits to the positions that ARM can load in from. It's got to be fairly close to the program counter, so I think maybe I don't actually need to do that in this case, but um, we might as well have it anyway. So we're, we're loading in the address of the hello world via this address here using LDR here, and then we're running our print string routine here. And this print string routine is very simple. It just reads in bytes from the address, the, the hello world message. It checks each one. If it gets to a 255, it returns. And if it hasn't got a 255, it's going to print the character to the screen. And the print character to the screen routine is this rather horrible long thing just here. So this is the print character routine. We're going to go through it in sections because it's quite long, but um, we'll, we'll get the hang of it hopefully. So the first thing we're doing is we're calculating the screen position of the um, character we want to draw next. So the VRAM base is at this address here. This is 6 million here. So this is the base of the video memory and each pair of bytes in that address is going to be a pixel. Each pixel is represented by two bytes, a half as it's called in um, ARM. And um, these are in the format shown here. We've got one bit that is either unused or alpha, depending on the um, screen layout. And we've got five bits for blue, five bits for green, and five bits for red. So a very nice, easy way of drawing on the screen, in my opinion. Um, it is worth pointing out that on the um, Game Boy Advance, we have to read and write to the screen in halves. If we uh, write it a, a single byte, it will actually reset the other byte as we do it. So you'll find your screen suddenly becomes half resolution. I suspect that might be an intentional thing to make low resolution drawing faster or something like that. But um, as I say, I did make that mistake and uh, it's, it doesn't work well. So we, we're working in halves here. Okay, so what are we doing? Well, we're getting our X and Y position in here. And then what we're doing is we're multiplying the X position by eight times two. Why eight times two? Well, because there's eight pixels per character and there's two bytes per pixel, so eight times two. Then we're taking our Y position and we're multiplying that by 240 times eight times two. Why 240? Well, there's 240 pixels per line and there's two bytes per pixel, so that's 240 times two, and there's eight lines per character, so times eight, and that's our Y position component. And what we're doing then is we're adding those two X and Y offsets to our screen base, and we've now calculated the top corner of the character we're going to draw. What we need next is to get the data that we're going to draw to that memory position. We do that by calculating the memory address of our bitmap font here, and then what we're doing is we're subtracting 32 we're subtracting 32 because we've got no character below character 32. And then there's eight bytes per character. So we're taking that offset and we're shifting it to the left by three bits and that effectively multiplies it by eight. And we're adding that to the bitmap font base. And that now calculates the offset in the bitmap font of the character that we want to show to the screen. So we've now got our source bitmap font and our destination screen. We're going to take each byte from the bitmap font, take one bit out of that byte, which is the pixel that we want to set or not set because we're using one bit per pixel in our font and we're using 16 bits per pixel or 15 for our screen so we're going to convert those bits accordingly okay so we've got a, a mask here and this is our one bit mask here for testing each pixel of the byte that we've read in from the font and then we've got our other setting here and this is the color that we're going to write to the screen so this is defining the color that we're going to set the set pixels to the unset pixels we're going to leave so what we're doing here is we're testing the pixel in the font. We've already read in a letter from the font. We did that just up here. We should have mentioned that. We're now testing that with our mask here. And if it is set, then we're storing the color de definition that we've defined here to the screen memory. And then we're moving the screen memory along. Now you can see this is a conditional um, here. This is only going to be set if the bit was one. 
So we're setting those pixels there. And then what we're doing next is we're shifting the mask along so that we test the next bit when we repeat the loop. And that's what we're doing just here. We're repeating the loop. We're doing this eight times for the eight horizontal pixels. And then we're moving down a line by moving 480 bytes. That's 240 pixels times two minus 16, because we've just drawn one character. That's eight bytes times two, 16. And then we're repeating for the eight vertical lines. And that has printed our character. Now, once we've done one character, we're moving the cursor X position along the screen. We've got cursor X here, we're just adding one to it and then storing it back. And that's moved the cursor for the next position on the screen. And that is how we draw our Hello World font here. Now, of course, if we don't like the blue color, which I could potentially understand, you just change the pixels here. And if we run this again, well, we can, we've now got a sort of pink color. You can, you can change them to whatever color you desire. You know, you can, you can do that. And of course you could change it if you wanted gradient fonts, whatever. As I say, the, the beauty, in my opinion, of bitmap screens is it's very easy to, um, to play around and to see the results. It's not, it's not so much work as messing with tile, tile map based systems where you have to set the tiles and then set the screen to match the tiles and everything's working in eight by eight blocks. You can just literally write bytes to the screen and see a result. Although as I say, in this case, you, you do tend to want to work in half words, uh, 16 bits blocks, because of the, the screen doesn't work normally if you write individual bytes. Okay, so that is the whole of our ROM file basically. So this is the entire code that we've got. How are we going to compile it? Well, I use these batch files and uh, as I said earlier, you can download the sources, but you can also download the build scripts and this hopefully this pre-configured environment should be available and should work just fine for you. And if you've got this, then you just press F6 and you select GBA and it should compile automatically. But it, maybe you don't want to use my script. Maybe you've got your own scripts or your own assembler or your own um, emulator and you want to do things yourself, which is fantastic if you feel you can do that. So I'm just going to describe the script that I use to compile the file and then how I get it running. Okay, so I'm using Vasm, the uh, free assembler, and I'm using the ARM Vasm, of course. I'm using STD format, which is um, standard format. And um, what we're doing here is we've got a whole variety of different um, parameters here and I'm going to describe each one. Now build file is the source file. Now in this case this is coming through my batch file but this would be the hello.asm or whatever the file you were compiling was. We're then specifying the ARM format we're using. We're using M7TDMI. This is ARM7 syntax so there's more commands and those half word functions were added. So we probably want to specify that otherwise uh, we'd be limited to ARM2 syntax. Um, this no eye align, you won't need that. The reason that's in there is because um, I'm doing some thumb programming that auto aligns to the 32 bit level and that was causing me some trouble. So I was turning that off here, but you wouldn't need that. Check labels and no case, these disable case sensitivity. And they also check that labels don't look suspiciously like commands, which will usually suggest we've forgotten to put a tab in. So uh, if, we, if we don't tab in our commands, they'll end up looking like labels. So I, I put that in as well. So those help me. But if you're, sen if you're better with your case sensitivity, you might not need that one, in which case, well done. I'm then defining some symbols. I'm defining Vasm equals one, build GBA equals one. Now you won't need these for that very simple example. Build GBA equals one. That's because a lot of my examples are cross platform. They can compile to multiple different destination systems and I use conditional compilation to do that. So that's what that one's for. Um, the Vasm equals one is not used by anything I do, but um, it's in case I decide to use a different assembler later and uh, maybe there will be the possibility to use multiple different assemblers for the same source file. I did that with my Z80 series. I use Win8 and Vasm simultaneously and they're slightly different in places. So that's um, something I just do preemptively in case I change assembler later. This L um, switch and this listing file here. These are very handy listing files. Uh, you won't need them in the early days, but they show the source code and the output bytes. And these are very handy if you're having trouble or if things are going wrong. For example, I'm currently writing a thumb tutorial and I couldn't get the no up command to work. And I looked at the listing file and I saw that no up command was being compiled to 32 bits, which is clearly wrong for thumb syntax, which should always be 16 bits. So it looks like there's probably the, the assembler doesn't know the NOP command, the no up command for the thumb syntax and was using the full 32 bit arm syntax, which I, I guess would be a bug. So yeah, listing files can really help you out if things aren't working the way you expected. But if you're a novice really getting started, they'll, they, they will be, be over your head. And what I'd say is if the um, assembly you're using offers them, 
then turn it on. If you can't find it or you can't get it working in the early days, it's probably not worth worrying about because you may not understand what they do anyway. But as I say, they are worth having generally. Fbin out specifies we're outputting a binary file. The cartridge we're creating, we've created our own header for it. It's just a, a dumb block of um, byte data, which is personally what I like. And then we're specifying the output file, program.gba. It's got to have a GBA extension for our emulator typically, but um, that's um, that's it. That's just the file we've created. Now, if that all goes okay, we're checking the error level there, but if all that all goes okay, we're starting it up with our Visual Boy Advanced emulator, program.gba, and that starts the emulator straight away, which is what you saw just here. So very easy. Of course, you can load it from the file menu if you prefer. So there we go. That's the first example. Now, the second example I've got, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. This is just a bit of a bonus. I always use my own monitor and debugging tools. I write my own and I, I don't tend to use the assembler ones, the emulator ones, sorry, unless I'm desperate because um, they vary system to system and I program so many different systems. I don't really have time to learn them. I forget how they work and um, sometimes they aren't available. So I try and use my own where I can. So um, I'm, I've included these in here. We've just got this addition here. We also need a new line function for my um, monitoring tools, which we've got there. We're just zeroing the X cursor, increasing the Y cursor there, very straightforward. So that's, um, that's something that this needs. But when we run with this, we will see a few little nice things. So here is the second example here. My right click menu doesn't seem to work there for some reason. Okay, we'll have to do without that. Now, the first function here is this monitor function. This will show all of the registers to the screen. You can see them all here, and it doesn't change any of them either. So you can put this, if you're having problems with part of your code, you can put this in and just check all of the registers and see if maybe one of them doesn't contain the value you expected it to, or maybe you're um, testing something like reading from the joystick and you want to see a quick output from that joystick read to the screen, and you can use this in that capacity. The other one is the mem dump. We specify a memory address here, a number of lines, and we run the mem dump, and it will dump those lines of memory to the screen. And this is um, good for testing if you're testing the um, addressing modes and how to read and write data to and from RAM. These are great for seeing what's in memory and seeing if it's changed. It's also good if you're having trouble and you're getting concerned that maybe something's corrupting your data. So if you've got a RAM area and it's not working right, or if you're loading your cartridge in and it doesn't seem to work at all, and you think, well, I'm is part of my ROM not in the position I thought it was, this can be quite handy for checking that as well. These are basically just two free little bonuses that are uh, very easy for me to add. You know, they, as I say, I already have them. And so I do include them in part of the Hello World series, although I'm not going to discuss how they actually work because they are quite complex. But anyway, there we go. That's all we're going to be covering for today. As I said earlier, you can get all of the source code for today's example from my website, so you don't need to type anything in. You can also get those build scripts. Um, so hopefully, if, um, if you're working on a Windows PC and um, the winds are blowing in the right direction, you should be able to compile all of this straight away without any effort. And hopefully you can get everything started as quickly as possible, because I know when you're just starting out and you, you just want to see something working and then start tweaking it and trying to make it into something else. So hopefully um, my build scripts will help you out there. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this today. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video today, please consider supporting my content. It takes 20 to 30 hours a week to keep making these videos. It's basically all I do when I'm not doing my day job, and it's only through the support of my patrons and the other sponsors that I'm able to continue justify doing it, essentially. You can back me on Patreon. I post a weekly update with the latest work on the current projects I'm doing. You can see one here, and also the newest videos. There's a large backlog of videos that are currently only available to the patrons, although they will all be available to everyone later on. And also it's the backers who I ask when it comes to making decisions on how to change the content in the future, what new content to create and things like that. You can see there was a recently a survey of the backers so I can plan next year's content. As well as Patreon, you can now become a member of my channel on YouTube. There's a join button you should see just below this video. You can use that. YouTube backers get the same content as Patreon. I just post it through the YouTube interface instead of the Patreon. It's the same content every week. Also, if you prefer, you can go to my Teespring store and you can get some Chibi Akamas merchandise or some Learn ASM merchandise if you prefer, if that's how you'd like to back me. Links for all three are in the description of this video below. Uh, anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.